senior scientific advisor uh, in the pharmaceutical industry and I'm a pharmacist by background. My role as a junior scientific advisor, I work within the medical affairs team. I work on different medical projects, they include things like implementing a research collaboration project, gaining insights from different uh, key opinion leaders or healthcare professionals that are in my therapeutic carrier. I also need to keep up to date on medical updates in the, er in the area to do with my medicine or the medicines that I'm involved with and share those with the appropriate teams that I work with. One important thing that underpins the industry as a whole is the ABPI code, um, which is the Association of the British Pharmaceutical Industry um, legislation, and that kind of underpins all activities that I do. So we go to a lot of conferences. Whenever a new um, research article that's related to my area is out or published, we make sure that we kind of read through that and maybe like evaluate it through making like documents for the rest of the team. Making we make sure that um, the rest of the different departments are well trained in new updates as well. To so make sure that and make sure that our strategy really aligns to all of the new information out there. So my journey started off at the University of Manchester where I completed a degree um, as a Master in Pharmacy. Following on from that four year course, I did um, pre-registration training year in Community Pharmacy. And then I worked for the same company as a relief pharmacist for another year to really kind of establish my skills. But I thought that I'd really like to learn more about the different things out there. And from completing my master's project um, during my pharmacy degree, I learned that I enjoyed learning about personalised medicine, so I decided to study um, a master's in genetic medicine. And I know it's a little bit against the grain to kind of go into research after qualifying as a pharmacist, but I thought that it was something that I really wanted to do, so I decided to pursue it further, as well as working part-time as a pharmacist along my studies. Um, I used this time to kind of decide what I'd like to move on to in the future. That's where I kind of was looking for roles in the pharmaceutical industry and I found this junior scientific advisor role. So becoming a junior scientific advisor meant that I kind of had to go back to being almost like an intern, so learning everything from scratch again. So in community pharmacists and as a registered pharmacist, you kind of know your stuff, you're out there, you know what you're doing because you've been, tra you've been trained, you've done a degree for four years and now coming into the industry everything is a little bit new. Um, and you have to look at things from a different point of view as well in that we have to really know the legislation that underpins the, the industry um, back to front. Um, so it's been a really big learning curve but I really value all of my experiences that I've had during industry because I'm really um, getting to know everything from, from the base onwards and upwards. So in community, I'm giving out the medicines to the patients. So I'm giving them advice. I'm really helping them on the ground level. At industry level, they're the kind of the makers of the medicines and the developers of the medicines. So they've gone from that initial research right down to the ground of giving out the med the medicines to hospitals and to community pharmacies as well and to suppliers. Um, so they're kind of like at the top of the chain almost. <laughs> um, not in in terms of hierarchy, but just in the ways that the way that medicines move through uh, the healthcare system. It's all about developing their research strategies to make sure that their medicines reach as many people as possible throughout the UK and throughout the world. So I applied to any role that I could in any different department within the industry. Just be persistent in applying, be persistent in networking with others through any different channels. I reached out to people on LinkedIn that were currently working in the pharmaceutical industry. Take responsibility for your own learning. Keep in contact with those people that support you and reach out to any different society or organisation um, that can help you as well. So one organisation that's really helped me is WOSIP and that stands for Women of Colour and Pharma. And I initially found out about this organisation through a representative doing a talk at my company and she talked about her experiences in the pharmaceutical industry and it was something that I could really relate to. So I reached out to her after the meeting and 
asked her how I could get involved, helped organise some networking events and I now support WOSIP as an EU ambassador for the organisation. Keep in contact with WOSIP on all the different social media channels, organise different networking events and they'll be posted on our website so keep an eye out on that as well. Some career paths can be a little bit hidden so it's really important to be open, share your experiences and listen to others in different fields um, to kind of find out what you'd like, what route you'd like to go down in the future. Um, I also think it's important to realise that you may come across barriers along the way but you can always overcome them. Speak to other people and get their experiences about how they overcome the barriers that they faced along their journey and just kind of try to educate yourself about the different things out there because there were so many different things that I didn't realise were out there in medical affairs, in, in different departments, um, in regulatory affairs, in the industry and also outside of that as well you've also got research and a lot of friends have gone down that avenue as well so it's really important to just talk to as many people as you can and get as much experience as you can uh, in whatever field that you're in. In the future, I see myself staying within medical affairs, but never say never. So I wouldn't mind moving into a different area if, if I felt that I was interested in it. But for the time being, I'd like to develop my skills and my knowledge in medical affairs to perhaps become a medical advisor or a medical science liaison. It can be difficult to think about where you want to go in the future. You may feel like you've got some kind of interest in a particular area, but it's really important to talk to other people and I think that what we NICE are doing is really important in sharing what's out there in regards to the, the, the diversity in STEM. Um, I think it's really vital for people to know about and to not feel that they're stuck wherever they are and to, to know that they have the freedom to move elsewhere into different industries or different areas.